Cribs kicking them. Cribs, this is a big moment. Hold your breath. Paddy, thanks for your time. No worries, thanks, guys. Interesting year for the Blues to date. It's been a lot happen. Yeah, it's um, I don't know, it's all part of the the journey you're on. You know, you never know what's around the corner, but um, it has been a an interesting year. It's nice now just to um, feel like as a group we've got our our brand back and identity a, a bit and playing some strong, powerful footy. So you know, would have loved to have been playing that right from the word go, but um, you know, we're still a group that's under a. I don't know, first 18 months of Vossi and, you know, still learn a lot about ourselves, but I feel like at the moment we found something that really makes us a good side again. So I'm interested in you, the person. Three weeks ago, you're in this chair. Would would there be a, a noticeable difference in you? When you, um, like it or not, when you win, you definitely rock up the club yeah. with a bit more of a spring in your step. It's just, you know, human nature. But uh, I've done a lot of work over the years um, to try and make sure that no matter how you play or perform, that you still rock up and give the same energy and, and the same person and not let um, results dictate how you show up. Because, um, you know, it's like early in your career, you, you can ride the roller coaster a lot. And, um, you know, when you're an 18 year old come in, footy's your life. And, you know, when you win you're, and you're playing well, you're, you know, you're loving it. And then when, you know, you get a, bit, a few setbacks and a bit of adversity, you're sort of not really used to it. You can sort of, mood can fluctuate. But I think it's, it's that whole thing. It's like, it's what we do, it's not who we are. And I think if you can keep doing that stuff, um, thinking that way, then um, when challenges do come, you can still sort of fight your way through it. So when you're a big figure like you are at your footy club, then the younger blokes look to you to go, OK, what, what sort of mood is he in? What is this? Yeah. Did you have to consciously work on that to make sure you were projecting confidence and that you were upbeat? Yeah, I think um, I, I think it's, it's you're just always learning. Like I like to be curious and find ways to be better, and not only as a player and as a leader, but just like in general day life. And um, mm. I feel like if you keep chipping away at that, then everything else becomes a better version of yourself as well. So it's definitely something I've done a lot of work on. Um, ben Crow's been a uh, massive help. He does a lot of stuff in that space with perspective and things mm. like that. So, um, and then sometimes you can learn all the things, but it's not until then you go through a bit of adversity that it can really test all the stuff you've actually learnt and you've got to put those things really into place. So, yeah, adversity is something you never, you never love going through, but at the time, um, you know, you can learn a lot about yourself and, and others around you and, um, you know, trying to find a way of, you know, how you can get the most out of that situation, which this year, yeah, definitely been a bit of adversity, but um, something I've sort of enjoyed the, the process of it all as well. You learn more about yourself, I think, when, you, when the times are tough. So. But as you say, you'd rather it didn't. You, you lose those last four games last year when you're in a position to play finals footy. You know what the expectation is. Heartbreak in the last two, a five-point and a one-point margin. How does that drive you from an off-season point of view? And then conversely, I'm thinking the motivation's going to be at the peak. You know, you're going to come out and you're going to be hitting it hard and it doesn't work. So how do you explain that to Carlton fans? Yeah, well, I think we'll still learn a lot about ourselves. Um, obviously, last year, um, you know, it was a disappointment pointing way to end, but I, I sort of look at it, um, I sort of I was chatting to Doc about it the other day, and, and I, as well as I've been chatting to Vossi, it sort of feels like last year when Vossi took over, we sort of came out of the blocks um, firing, and, um, you know, we sort of just went, you know, from a, a mediocre team to all of a sudden we started really well, and it's just like, how good is this? And then all of a sudden we got a few injuries and, um, you know, we're probably a middle of the table side for the back half of the year. And, um, you know, then you start searching on what made us good at the start of, you know, 2022. And going into this year, you know, we won some games early, but we'll grind away. We wouldn't say we we're playing great footy, but um, we were hanging tough. And, and then we go through a bit of a, a tough period where, you know, like, well, what's going on? Like, what, what makes us a good side? And we did a lot of, lot of work um, with the coaches and, and the leadership group and, and players. And one thing I will say is through the whole time, the group's energy and motivation didn't waver once. And just how tight the group was and, you know, everyone you know, wanted to be part of the solution, which is which is huge tick. And you never know when you're going to come out of that sort of hurdle. But we feel like we've found a way that makes us a really good footy side and we feel like we've we, we know, you know, why we started the year so well last year and we feel like we're in a really good position now and, you know, you get some good results and you play some powerful footy and um, I think it's the same time, we still have a long way to go, but um, we feel like from a, a brand and identity point of view, um, we know what makes us a good footy side now, which probably for a, for a long period of there, we're trying to search out what, what makes us the best version of us. Mm. Tell me, you tell me if I'm wrong, to me it looks like there's been a noticeable change in, you know, pressure, um, you know, attention to you know, the less glamorous stuff. So I look at it and go, I think the egos have been parked, you know, which happens to everyone. The, the, the selflessness theme has been with successful sides for a couple of years. Is that something that you're being conscious of? And you tell me if I'm right off the track here, but I'm watching Jack Martin and I'm watching, you know, um, um, 
uh, Big Harry and a few others. Don't worry about results. Do the hard work and the results will come. Yeah, I think um, sometimes when you're low on confidence, you can try so hard um, to impact the game just with your own game. Um, and sometimes when you try harder, um, you know, you actually don't play as good as you want. And, and then it looks like ego's taken over. Exactly. So I think um, I think the group's intention's always been right. Um, I think now we've sort of focused on, all right, what's the things that are in our control? Um, that's the pressure. How can we be a great teammate to each other? Uh, how can you make my teammate the best player out there? And how can we have so much fun out there? Because that's what, in the day, that's what you did when you played footy yeah. as a kid. So it sounds really simple, but we just went back to simple stuff and enjoying it when you're playing selfless footy and tough footy um, mm. probably gives you the most energy out there. So from you, you're the leader in all this and you're coming off a Brownlow medal year. So why do you think it wasn't quite there for you personally? Um, I think a bit of that, I was, you know, you start um, having a few games where to below par and, um, you know, you want to help the team, you know, get forward. So you, you're nearly trying harder sometimes mm -hmm. and it's not going for you. And I just went back to, to the basic stuff. Like, I'm, I'm playing my best when I'm playing with physicality and aggression and, um, you know, more being the, I suppose, the hunter rather than the hunted. You know, I love the competitive nature of a game. And so I've just kept really simple, focused on my pressure and um, just try to have as much fun out there as, as I can. And, um, yeah, like, on the back, it's, you know, played, played a few decent games, but um, it's more, what I'm more happy about is, you know, guys, guys around me playing really good. Like, I think guys like Walsh, he's back to his, yeah. his best. He's playing that power. Chez has been um, amazing all year. Um, he's just taken his game to, to another level. And then you've got guys coming in like Fogarty and Cunningham out a different layer. And mm. um, so it's just, it's, it's fun to play. Um, and, and like I said at the start of the interview, it's sort of, we feel like now we, we know what makes us the best version of us as a side. And, um, you know, every week's a new challenge. Coach, boss, not dissimilar to, no, well, you don't play dissimilar to him. I'll give him the greater respect at the moment until you finish. How's he been through it all? And I don't expect you're the captain. You're not going to come out and say, no, he's lost it or anything. But, I mean, was there, did, did you ever feel a need? Sometimes you've got to go and pick the coach up. Now, I've had that experience where they think, you know, they need to have the answers to everything and you can you can be a real sounding board for them. So how's that relationship between you two? Yeah, no, it's really good. We're, we're really transparent but um, always have each other's back. And, um, no, there's definitely times where you check in. No, it's human nature. Like, he went through, through a lot there and... One thing we just wanted to make sure he knew that you know we all had his back and and, and we knew he was the man. And do you sense that there's a that groundswell which is external, which you try to block out, but you know it gets through. Do you sense that you needed to be to just reconfirm for him that hey, you know we're here and it's you and us and let's get at it. I don't think he needed it because he felt the stability from the whole club. Um, yeah. I, I felt like the club was um, very stable. Like there was feel like a storm externally, but internally it was actually really right. calm. And, yeah. um, the energy and that was really high the whole time. I felt like from from the board down there was actually a lot of stability. I know there was a bit of noise at some point, but I feel like majority that the the whole club was really stable. Um, and Vossi's been through enough in his time to know how the whole industry works. So he was really confident in, in his processes, what he was doing, and. One thing I really took from what he did through that time is how up and about and optimistic he was. And you talk about when you, you know, when you rock up, like we said before, and your leaders show up, mm. he just showed up the same way, no matter win or loss. But his positivity, his relationships and, and keeping everyone um, on the same track has been his biggest strength and um, that's why the, the boys love playing under him. So I've read a lot of stuff about you and him. So it's new age and this is sometimes us older blokes get, trying to get our head around it. and. I hear Brownie talk about Vossi. Brownie's version of Vossi, the captain, and what you just described can be polar opposite. He was brutal as a player, sometimes brutal as a captain in his feedback. Is there room for that still? Oh, he tells you how it is. Yeah, there's, he, he, um, he's not afraid to, to look in the eye and, and, um, and tell you, mate, we, we need more from you, or, you know, this part of your game's not quite up to scratch, but he does it in a way which you walk out I think he does in a way, he builds a relationship, so when he challenges you, 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 you don't want to let him down. Yeah. But at the same time, he challenges in a way where it still makes you feel confident and, and good about yourself. Mm. And yeah, you can just tell he's done a lot of work in that space. And I feel that, I know a lot of the young guys feel that as well. He's got an aura about him and, yeah. and, a, and a physicality oh, yes. and, and he's got a presence when he walks in the room and I think that's what really makes him good. And yeah, I, I think that, that real, you know, build guys up, but also challenge them and say, mate, this is the standard we need. Um, he's, a good, he's got a really good balance of that. And your style as a captain, is it in your armoury to give, give a, you know, some brutal feedback? 
if and and have trust in the relationship to know that it'll be received the same way. You gotta have an accountability and the standards you want to set as a as a group and, and as a leader, what, what you want the culture to be and, and the way we want to play. And my whole philosophy around leadership is how can I make guys feel good about themselves? How can I build confidence and belief, especially the young guys? Mm. So I know when I was a young guy, you know, the guys that made me believe and, and feel confident uh, really helped me. So I know how much as a leader you can impact the young guy's career. And then it's just basically help show them the way. It's like, you know, this is what I reckon you can do in your game. And then you try and say, help them plan their week and map out the week of how they can improve. Then you see them doing on track, or you see them doing the game. And that's when you've got to really pump them up and say, mate, this is, this is what makes you a really good player. Like, I've seen the work you've done throughout the week. And, you know, that positive reinforcement. And then all of a sudden, like, yeah. I, you know, I've done the work now and, you know, um, the leaders are noticing I'm going to do it again and all of a sudden their own game builds. And I think a perfect example for us this year is a guy um, like Brody Kemp. Yeah. Um, I think he's come in and we always talk about guys that come in, you can, you come in and you just want to play AFL and then all of a sudden you have this game and you have this moment, you'd have the exact same, I had the exact same and you have a game, you're like, hang on, I'm, I'm good enough here. And then the next game you have another good game, you're like, geez, I'm actually can be an AFL player. Yeah. And I've just seen him go from, you know, getting on the side to all of a sudden he's like, I'm good enough to play AFL to like, I'm an important part of this team now. Yeah, um, and he's playing some great footy, but I'm sure you'd have the same moment in your career, Gaz. Yeah, it's a great example. I think he's, 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 a, he's a great example. And, you know, externally what you see coming in can be so different to what you guys are experiencing internally as well. You've been able to work through what's important to you. So you talk about... You know, the stuff I read about you meditating. Uh, I've got a partner who's a big meditator and I, she's encouraging to me and I'm, you know, I'm half in, half out, but you seem committed to it. You talk about journaling, you talk about... You, know, you seem like you've worked out what works for you best. Yeah, I just like... I like to try and learn and then I'll give it a crack. Yeah. Uh, I'll give it a crack for a, not just a week, but I'll give it a crack for maybe a couple of months and then, all right, is this helping me or is it, you know, actually I don't... I'm doing it, but it's actually draining my energy. Mm. Like, cos some, some people say, a journal, and you start journaling, all of a sudden it becomes a chore. You're like, mate, what am I doing? Like so, a three-page diary. Yeah. That's not what you're doing. Nah, it's right? just honestly, you know, it takes me five minutes in the morning, five minutes at night just to check in, but making sure that I know what I want to set out for the day, but also at the end of the day you sort of reflect and say, that you know, no matter what day I've had, what's the wins I've had in the day? Yeah, meditating is an interesting one. I probably did a lot of reading and things and, and saw a lot of high performers do it. Mm. Um, so I was like, you know, I'll give this a crack. And... At the start, didn't enjoy it one bit. Uh, it's a bit like going to the gym. You go to the gym, you do a few reps, and you wake up the next day and you got doms, and then you don't want to go back. So, when you find when you meditate, um, you know you get distracted a lot. Um, and then as you do it more and more, I feel like it increases your focus. But um, also um, for me, it's just a time to switch off yeah. um, and just you know there's also a lot going on. You know when you're playing AFL footy, it's just a time to chill out and have a bit of your own time. So. Yeah, it's something I enjoy. I probably do it um, two lots of ten minutes a day or one ten minute a day, and um, it's not a lot. But if you keep doing it over time, like anything, you, you get better at it. And you broaden your experience. I mean, your lot. Yeah, I hope your own um, personal life changes. You become, you know, you're married now. Your relationship. So you're cognizant of not only you, but you know, your partner and the impact that your moods have on her. Like, it's a bit like when you're walking into a footy club. Can I come in here and be positive? And then what do I bring home? Do I bring the work home with me? Do I leave it at the front door and pick it up on the way back? Where, how does that work for you? Yeah, that's that's a, a big one. It's, um, I, I try and, I, I do try and making sure, I, I only live pretty close to the club now, but I try and make sure once I leave the club, you sort of park work and, and do sort of that meditation before you go home just to switch off. And I'm, I'm guessing it'll be even more with kids. Like, once mm -hmm. you start having kids, you know, they'll be flat out. So I'm not quite mm -hmm. there yet, but uh, won't be too far away. My uh, my wife's um, big into it as well. Um, you know, she's had some mental health sort of issues in the, in the past, so she's really big in it. And um, I've seen the benefit it's had on her as well. So um, it's just sort of a, a space that we both enjoy. And we know if we do it, we're a better version um, of us, and then that helps um, each right. other out as well. So, yeah, sensational. Yeah. student of footy, do you watch what's going on around you? you you're taking notice of Collingwood, you're taking notice of the way they play. Themes and the threads of the competition that you're noticing and that you guys are either jumping on board with or are prepared to go a bit differently? I, I do watch a, a bit of footy. Um, I always love watching the best sides to sort of see how the game's changing. Um, I feel like the game's definitely changing at the moment, or changed. Especially Collingwood, I feel like they're going pretty direct, pretty quick. Um, that power run, handball chains, a um, bit of chaos. Port Adelaide a bit the same, they're going real direct. Um, you know, the ball's in motion a lot. And then it's finding out, I think, you know, like any team, you find out what's your 
your one wood as a team and then also how can you keep adapting to the modern game. We feel like we're getting that part of our game in there. We know our strength's in the contest. Uh, the more it's in the contest, we know, you know we'll back ourselves against anyone, so. You want to kick a few more goals, personally? If you, they calm you, we won't say no, but um, as long as we're kicking them as a team, I don't really... Right, so it's not a not big on high on your agenda? Well, it's like, if you, you know, if you handle three off the goals when you kick zero, but your teammates kick them, it's not really a thing. I, th I think a big one um, I'd probably more look at now is score involvements. Um, how can I be part of the chain and, and create? You want to make the most when you get the opportunities, but at the same time, if you're creating them as well. Taking Dacos or Butters, if you had the choice? <laughs> I'd say both of them, mate, to be honest. <laughs> um, Mate, they're having great years, aren't they? It's good to watch. I um, reckon the older you get, the more I reckon you appreciate yeah. the players around you. I reckon when you're young, you, you know, you really can... I suppose you're always watching them, picking up their game. It's sort of like a competitive sort of battle. But as I got older, I'm nearly... You love playing against them, don't get me wrong. But when you... you sometimes you just want to sit back and watch them and, and see the skills they, they do. And the way the game's playing is really helping guys like them because the game's getting a bit quicker. Yeah. And because they're, they're both tough, for their size, but they're so skillful and quick on the outside. So um, some of the kicks they do, mate, um, even on their left, I wouldn't be able to do it on my right, so. Philosophically, would you recommend they should be to tag those guys or not? We've had this. Again, we're old, we're old school. We're going, why aren't we tagging? Why, why aren't you tagging these blokes? You, you tell me why you wouldn't, or you would. I think you've got to back your, your system in. It all depends on the team structure, but you back your system in. I think there's, there's always going to be accountability for, on the best players because how can we still minimise what they can do but sort of maximise our strengths? The, the hard thing is with the, the, the best teams is, you know, you put so much time into one and if they're a smart footy player, which they usually are when they're the best, then they can start manipulate the structure around the stoppage and the game which then can expose you in other areas. Plus, you, you know, let's say you look at Collingwood, for example, you've got, you got Dugowie, Penderbury, Tom Mitchell. So you put all your effort into Dacos, all of a sudden Dugowie gets off. So it's, Dacos is having an amazing year, like freakish level. Um, but you also got to be calculated about, you know, if you, you want to shut him down, but is that going to give other, someone else, you know, more of a, more of a crack? So, um, yeah, it's always a balance, mate. But then there's also a time when they could be getting out of control and you say, look, this guy's killing us here, we need to, we need to, um, sort him out, so. Fire away. This is a two-way street, yeah. so you can... You, 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 we, we're accountable as well. No, I'm interested, guys, because, um, look, as the media, look, going from playing, where, you know, you can get adversity, you can get a lot of stuff thrown your way, to then you go into the media. Um, and I, I think when you... You know, when you're going through adversity, you would have had it, and, you know, people... A lot of people mess you. I hope you're right, mate. So I get now that the media, um, like, you get paid to have an opinion, like that, that's your job. Mm. How hard is it for someone in the media where you have to, you know you have to challenge someone, mm. um, whether you feel like it's right or wrong, you know oh, I have to be paid to have an opinion. Mm. Um, I can't just always pump guys up. Um, how challenging is that for you? Because I think that's the, the trickiest part going from what I reckon feel like would be going from a player to a media yeah. person because you know what it feels like when you get challenged. Mm. No, it's a great question. It's one we all uh, wrestle with and it, what tends to happen is over time, you know, you get more comfortable with the role. And it's only natural. I don't think anyone that comes straight out of playing and comes in and starts swinging from the hip, you know, I think you've got to have the respect to, and you'd be given a bit of licence to temper, you know, your criticisms. I, I, you know, I think we all are cognisant of how hard it is. But as time goes on, you get more comfortable because, you, you know, you're a bit distant from it. What I always hope is the players, that you guys, if I'm ever critical, look at it and go, OK, what, what's the rationale behind that? And if it, if it ever is, you ever got to the conclusion and said, oh, he's looking for a headline, yeah. then I'd be really disappointed. Yeah. And and I know as a player, mate, we, we, you, you could get one bloke just pumping you up and pumping you up and pumping you up and you just accept it and, you know, it makes you feel good. The moment, moment he gives you a kick in the arse, you're the worst prick in the world. Yeah. You know? And you go, well, hang on a minute. Yeah, there's the 30 times where I've been supportive, but you've got to be... So as long as it's balanced and reasonable, I think, um, yeah, we live with it and it sits comfortably on you. We did some stuff on the weekend about a young couple of young North Melbourne guys that, you know, maybe could have gone harder and then, yeah, we have that conversation. Yeah. Is this fair? You know, is this picking out someone? And you go, well, yeah, it's not for the sake of doing it. It's where North Melbourne are at. These guys have got to get better and hopefully it's taken that way. And have you ever done ones where you're like, oh, I wish I didn't go down that path? Or is there ever an, an age limit where you say, you know what, I don't agree with, you know, an act they did in the footy field, but, you know, yeah. are they 18 or 19 and I feel like I'm just going to, you know, let that one slide? No, spot on. Uh, we, or me, my attitude to that is, yeah, if someone did 
not go hard enough or then we go, look, he's a young kid and he want to he want to be better the next time. If it's Patrick Cripps, you know, in his ninth year, then yeah. the criticism would probably be a bit more pointed. Yeah. No, I think it's... Um, I always talk to the boys about it. It's like everyone talks about, like, control the controllables and... Um, like, it's, it's easier said than done, but when you, I think, when you get to an AFL level, as a junior, you know, you're just playing footy and there's no distractions, where once you come to AFL level, it's because it's a big industry, there's, you know, a lot of a lot of chatter, a lot of distractions. Like you said, good or bad. Yeah. Um, and I feel like, you know, more players can actually remove themselves and not actually expose themselves to reading stuff. That's um, interesting. So yeah. I'll ask you on that. So I don't do any social media, so I'm... I'm I know that I'd be getting abused and criticised somewhere out there. Are you a social media participant? And my next question, if you are, why would you be, given that, you know, what I understand to be out there? I'm on it, but I wouldn't say I'm on it much compared to, to most. One, for that reason, it's, um, you know, you can be as mentally strong as you want, but if you keep saying negative sort of comments, you, you, you do get better at sort of having a laugh about it, but... Um, there's certain things that would definitely affect your, your psychology, so... So for uh, your younger group, like... And don't worry, we, we all remember when we were young, to get some you know, praise, so you go, so, you know, I'd imagine social media, but also what comes with it is so damaging, I reckon. So what's your advice to those kids? Well, it's like, yeah, you don't want to ride the roller coaster, but when you're young, it's like you said, the novelty was like, you know, I've just made AFL, I've had a good game, you know, mm -hmm. how good is this? Yeah. You know, people start to recognise me, you know, people talking about me, but... Once it comes up, things go down. So no one's going to be bulletproof their whole career. So better off is just to not read it. Uh, but sometimes you got to learn. You got to go through the fire to actually to, to learn that a bit as well. And like you said, like when things aren't going great, you know, if you're reading all that, then you start there. But when things are going well, you know, you put up there. Like the media, we, you guys talk about the extremes, you know, mm. but we want to be in the middle. So. Yeah. I know that's all the same, nothing's as good as bad. It's like, well, I can't control what you say about me. All I can control is, you know, what I do throughout the week, you know, how I think and how I play. And um, if you keep having good habits with that, then, um, you know, everything else is irrelevant, really. So what about mentor for you? And you, you have them around the footy club, I accept that, whether it's a line coach or, you know, whoever, it's a club psychologist maybe. You got someone outside that, that's got a different, you know, lens on what's going on? Yeah, I mean, um... Been chatting to Ben Crow a fair yeah, bit in the last ben couple well. of years. Yeah. So, you know, he's obviously story's been uh, huge with the, the impact that he's had on a lot of people. And I just love his, the way he sees things um, from a perspective point of view in life, but also in sport. He's been great as just a sounding block and, um, you know, just talking about exactly what we are chatting about there. But, um, you know, what are the things you can control versus you can't? He always talks, um, you know, trying to control the things that are uncontrollable just causes anxiety. So, pure example, it's, um, you know, you write down all the things you can control, write down all the things you can't, you know, cross them off and then just stick to the things that you can control and build your week around that. And things, simple things like that's really helped me. Great advice. So, Paddy Jr., Paddy Cripps Jr. has <laughs> arrived. He's 15. He's got a, um, a BBL contract in front of him <laughs> with the potential to play for Australia and Carlton are going, no, no, you're coming over here. What's Dad saying? I reckon I'll get a footy in the end pretty quick, <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, I reckon it'll be, it'll be interesting to see once, you know, you, you, you do have kids and they do grow up because you sort of don't want to force you know, everything down them, but, um, you know, any any sport I'll, I'll try to get involved in pretty quick. Away from footy, uh, completely away, what is it that uh, makes you happy and keeps you busy? I know you and I have had many farming chats over the journey, but what is it that makes you happy? <laughs> I just like getting outdoors. Um, you know, when I feel like I need to really switch off, go for a hit of golf or, or a surf with, with a couple of mates, and I feel like that's just a good way just to relax. Other than that, just, yeah, I, I'm a big family man. Um, you know, my close mates I, I love hanging out with mm. when I can. So, you know, I think they're the people that, um, you know, just make you, you know, feel like you're back on the farm when you're a kid again. And mm. um, that's, you know, once footy's, once you're not at the footy club, that's how I like to, to feel and, and sort of carry myself, so. Feels like you've got really great perspective, so. Club's in good hands, mate. Yeah, no, I feel like it's, um, you know, the older you get, the more stuff you go through, the, the better you, you you learn and, you know, footy will end up one day and you know, next challenge you get onto. But um, like we said at the start, you know, I'll still be the same same person and, yeah, you never forget where you come from. So, yeah, we driving a case tractor, guys. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe when I'm 35. We'll be doing a farming <laughs> series. Hey, onwards and upwards. Can't wait for the, what unfolds over the next six, seven weeks. All right, thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Anyway. Cheers, man.